yeah so now sir yeah thank you for reminding right okay so was that clear <coughs> is this clear or do you want me to explain it again or so you just did the denominator of the limit I think it would be very helpful if you write the joint conditional and marginal in terms of uh, pi and uh, the normal distribution just as the formulas. I think that will make it much more clearer. So this the left part is the statistical part on the right side. If it's the formulas, the the correl the connection becomes easier to understand. I'm not saying we want to mug it up without understanding, but the understanding yeah. becomes easier. So see, I'll start. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the first thing is what is the number of component here? K. So number of component will lie from some k equals to one to k, correct? Capital yeah. K. Now, if I have to ask about the PMF of this function, this will be what? Pi k. Probability such that z equals to small yeah. k. Yeah. Correct. And this will be pi k. Correct. This is clear. Yes, sir. Now I'm coming. With, yeah, coming to the conditional one. And for the conditional density, if I'm asking you, this is if the component is been given, and then you have to say about, then you can. No, this will be your. Yeah. Correct. Is this clear? The first thing, yeah. the conditional one. Yes, sir. Now you have marginal density function. Okay, and now the margin will be. I told you about the marginal, and marginal is the whole density function of the full GMA model, whatever you are having. The case, like whatever the component. So what you will do is you will do the summation for all. Correct. So k will lie from one to capital K, and here it will be f g of k multiply with function of x given z. Correct. This is what you will be getting. For the marginal, you can write it something like this, and this will be the summation of what you can write it. This will be pi k, k will lie from one to k, and this will be your normal by with some normal distribution. Correct, pi k and sigma k square. This you can do the summation part. Uh, sir, is this clear? Yes, sir. And now this is much clearer. Yeah, yeah. this is formula is clear. Uh, Sir, if a particular random variable x uh, uh, lies in uh, kth, uh, supposing it is lying in the kth Gaussian, then for other Gaussians, uh, it, the value of the margin when we are summing it, uh, it should come out to zero, right? Uh, that it is only lying in this particular Gaussian, and there are other rest yeah. Gaussians where the probability should be zero. The, this particular random variable is there. No, so that's why we are calculating the probability value, and the probability value can't be zero for. See, so even though it's coming from, you can say that, but there will be some some chance if we are plotting a GMM model, something like this. Let's for example, you have two component, and you have a data point, something like there. Okay, so it's there. The data point is there, but there is a <coughs> a chance, right? There is a some probability. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> there is some probability, right? For this yes, data sir. point, let's for example, this is some x i. There is some probability that this data point is coming can come from this GMM model also. The so not GMM model. This is the first component, correct? And this is the second component. But there is a high chance that will come from the second component. But there is a probability value, right? This one. There yes. is a some value that can tell you. There is a high value that the x i is coming from the second component, but there is some probability that it can come from the first model, like first uh, element also. Okay. First so, component also. Okay. Like, yes, yeah, so Gaussian. Like something like soft. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so Gaussians never gave us zero probability for any random variable. Yeah, it will not never give you zero zero probability. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you for clearing. So for any outlier, also it will be giving you some smaller values. Okay, sir. Okay. Now we are left with uh, the other part is what is left now? Uh, marginal we have discussed. Okay, the one the other thing is the now discuss the joint density.
and the joint is pretty simple that you can write it directly the numerator part this basically this multiply with the f given and this is what we are summing up to get the marginal correct so in the stats also you for the getting the marginal density you are doing the integration or the summing of all the joint density correct this is what we are doing it here also <clears throat> And for the conditional density, conditional, the 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 one that we have calculated earlier was pretty simple. The other there can be two things also. Z given x also, and that Z, Z given x. Function of Z given x. What am I? Z given x k given some x. You can write it. You can use the Bayes theorem. The same thing you can write it here. <coughs> okay, so basically you have two three things. Okay, I can write the form that also, but like just the if for let's for example for some data point just coming from the first component, you can write it something like this. Right, pi k multiply multiplication, which you can write it the x given nu k sigma k square and then having the summation for all the part is it clear now yes sir hmm. so if you, if you want to get like see what basically the pi this one representing was there is some pi k chance, so there is some percentage of chance that the data point is going to be picked from the kth component. Okay, this is what this means. And then you have a conditional, the basic thing about this, the marginal too, you are already aware of marginal is basically the whole GMA model, like whole density function, it has been given. <coughs> and the, the first part, this is basically the simple one, how likely it is that the x is to come from the skate component okay the marginal is simple and the joint is basically i told you the joint represents the one thing first is the peak component the component k and sample Find x from it. I guess this is clear. So I'll just move to the slide now. This is clear, right? So at least the notation part is clear. Yes, sir. So what we were doing here is we just started with a Gaussian model where we are having two component and the given the, there was some information when given then we took on some million, million data point and try to plot that okay after plotting that we got something like this we plot it and we got this histogram okay and now there is a difference what's the difference between the 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 saffron or or this the the exact the histogram that we have plotted that is what's the difference between two these two it's a scaled up version. This is the first and this is the second one. Okay, this is the scale up, like downscaled, but in, in the term of this GMM model, what's the difference? Like, uh, is this, this the, uh, what's the difference? Like, which of them is the exact one and, and, and which of, like, this is the hatch, reflecting hatch you the normal distribution? The normal distribution is the, yeah. not the correct one. We're supposed to get it in the, the 
the blue one that one i think in the second version uh, the dotted one is uh, uh, dotted one is with uh, with uh, uh, full uh, probability one the, all the data points in that particular gaussian uh, one is for population and one is for sample i guess in one word like that but yeah basically this is the uh, if you have not scaled scale means you have not have multiplied with pi like then you would have got this normal distribution just if you are giving some if you are plotting just as a, the two parameter mu1 and variance then you would have got this one So we we can't hear you in between, sir. Uh, we lost. We got disconnected. We can't hear you in between. Correct. Yes, sir. You you are not audible. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for that. I guess maybe the internet connection. Okay. Is it clear now? It's clear, right? Yes. Is it clear yeah, now? Yeah. now See, what are the two peaks? Yes. Sir, you were saying like uh, if we select a uh, pi value uh, 0 0.5, then which one is that? In the between, we were not able to hear you. Mm -hmm. Correct. See, if you are just giving the information about the parameter, just the parameter, if you are giving the information to the Python, any code, if you just want to plot that, you'll be getting this plot, correct? Because the area should come out to be one, the area under the curve. Similarly, if you are giving the information, just the pi two and the spreadness of the data, you'll be getting something like this. But now, as if you are plotting GMA model, so the whole area should be coming out to be one, correct? The whole area under this curve, correct? Yes, sir. And as we are multiplying, we are sampling the data point also. As fifty percent of the data should be coming from the first and the fifty percent from the second. After doing the sampling, also we are we have just downscaled the just the downscaling of the original uh, uh, normal distribution. After that, we'll be getting the plot something like this. So Sorry, does, we can't do. So we can't get. That, yeah. Does that mean uh, the yellow line is uh, area under the yellow normal Gaussian distribution is equal to one, and the greener under the greener one is also equal to one? But when we are scaled down, then both both uh, is equal to one so is does that mean i guess this is because yeah, so if we are, individually it's, yeah yeah i was saying that um that because we are taking uh, all these gaussians and combining them uh, we have to make sure that they are following the basic laws of probabilities that's why mm -hmm. yeah. so, so the basic law of the density that you basically would have read about that the area under the any of the density function should be one. equals to one if you'll plot it similarly directly the normal distribution one and two you'll be getting more than one correct that is not correct so that's why we have to downscale that okay so okay is, is it clear now so the area yes, under yes. the curved the line will represent only a normal distribution one and when we combine two normal it will be less so these are two normal distributions so the probability of the orange and green together will be two which is not possible so you have to scale it down so that the entire probability of all normal distributions together is one so you multiply it by pi so scale it down yeah correct so these are, in, these are individual okay. normal distributions so the orange is individual it has one the green has one so but total cannot be two so you have to scale it down okay yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah thanks uh, uh, so let's uh, so we have read about this first example now if you have been so the second part okay let me delete this yeah so the, now we have the same plot and now you'll as you already aware of the notation part now you can see that if you have to write it the marginal density function 
for this this is what i was saying right if you have to get the marginal density function or fx this is basically the density function f wherever you have a small f you have to, like that's the density uh, density function and the subscript will represent the notation for like here you have to get it for the x and for the marginal uh, for the marginal density of x we are already aware that you have to take the account of whole points correct so now it will be if you have a two components you can just write it as the summation you can write in this form also if you have to write it you can write it in this form also the summation of pi k correct and n x given nu k sigma k square this clear right how are we getting so we have already discussed about the marginal density function and if you have to write in exact form like the normal density function has been, the information has been given just to uh, put out the value of sigma and nu k so this is fine okay now i want to know about the joint density function of xg okay what it will be if i am to for the first component if i have to write what will be the value for this this is basically the joint density function right what will be the value if i have to k for the first component if i have to write it will be pi 1 n mu 1 sigma square 1 divided by pi 1 i mean the norm pi 1 normal plus pi 2 normal no just the numerator will come okay correct so it yeah, will be pi 1 one. into n into pi 1 into normal mu 1 sigma sigma 1 sigma square 1 correct so it will be something yeah fg multiply with x given g correct and if you have to write it for the k equals to maybe for the first component you can write it in that form right pi 1 multiplication of what what will you write here the normal distribution 1 x as that mu one mu one sigma one square correct this is what you will write it is this clear to everyone the joint density function and see you would have read it in that way also you can write i told you joint is basically equals to what conditional multiply with the marginal if you are writing it here some see basically you can have two formulas for any of the thing so if you are writing the marginal for this fg you are just writing it here you can think of g will come it here like it will be in the given condition if you are writing something like this whenever you are writing the joint distribution x given x something like this x and g you can write it in this form if you are taking the marginal for z just put it here the in the so the the numerator part will be z and then here it the left part is x so you can write it like this okay and this function is in the form of some pi k and this will be what if you have been given already given that is coming from the first component kth component and then you have to write the density function so you are already aware that's a normal dis distribution value so nk x given mu k and sigma k square is it clear you will be able to write right if you see that we are just writing the same thing for the joint density function you can write it in that this form joint equals to marginal to the conditional <coughs> and if you have to write for the kth component you can write it pi k multiplication of the corresponding to the kth component whatever the normal density function it is uh, normal distribution you can write in that form This is clear, right? Till now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Similarly, the marginal also I already discussed. You can write it in this form also. <clears throat> so already you are aware that you have to just take care of each of the component probability value multiplied with the normal density function. 
okay and if you are writing in the form of jo uh, joint distribution also you are doing the same thing the just you are taking out the in the bayesian theorem also bayes theorem also we have already seen that you are just taking out the numerator part doing the summation for that okay or you can directly take out the de denominator part both are same okay see either you take out the the numerator part and, and do the summation or take out the direct denominator part so both are same we giving you the marginal density function only okay this is what we are doing for the marginal density function you can just multiply you have to just so you can just remember it like uh, you just have to take out each of the component and then multiply with the, the normal respective normal density function this is what uh, this is how you can get the marginal density function for x now you have been given this plot okay can you tell me about the pi 1 pi 2 and like not uh, yeah pi 1 pi 2 you can say about this because the information Same. about the mean and all you can't get mean you can give but the, the density you can't get okay what's the information so what is the pi value here for pi first one plot one pi 1 and pi 2 looks like 0.5 0.5 yeah here you can see the exact value right it's like 0.5 it's totally almost similar right and the my pi 1 will be minus 1 1 minus 1 and then 1 and the sigma will be same but you can't say about then from the so okay let's go to the next slide so you have been given this so the where spreadness is also same and you have the, the the percentage or the ratio of the data point coming from the first component the second component is also same for this gml model at least <coughs> now you have the second example how can what can you say about the pi 1 and pi 2 now what can you say about the pi 1 pi 2 just seeing the peak value and then pi 1 is probably 0.8 0.8 and 0.2 something like that yeah so one thing you can do yeah uh, the variance is same so the spreadness of data is same for both the cases if both the cases have the same spreadness of data then there must be the difference between pi 1 and pi 2 for sure and pi 1 looks to be greater than pi 2 correct so pi 1 will be greater than pi 2 so you have said the exact value so it's like 0.8 and 0.2 can we make out from the graph that it is 0.8 and 0.2 no that you can't say yeah, yeah. Okay. it's just that we yeah, we can look at the if the variance is the same we can look at the height and tell approximately correct correct not approximately yeah so you can say about like ha huh, pi 1 will be much higher than pi 2 that you can say not the exact value i don't think so you'll be able to say the exact value but yeah this information you can give that pi 1 will be a much higher than the pi 2 if you have the same spreadness or the variance correct <coughs> and if i am giving you this information what will be the plot how it will go if you have you know the information that most of the data point is coming from pi 1 only so there will be much sharper right sharper or you can say the the sharp not the sharper because the variance is same for both the plot but the peak will be much higher for the pi like the first component compared to the second component right yeah first one will be very high second one will be like a just a blip kind of a thing correct so the first one will be very high and the second one will be just the small plot you can see that from here also correct so this is what the simple simple things are there so if you have been given this the fourth example is there <coughs> now this is a gmm model now can you say about then can you say about the pi 1 pi 2 it's like symmetrical i, I hope so it's like symmetrical can you say about the pi 1 pi 2 again should be 0.5 0.5 Sir, it will be point five, point five. As the variance also looks similar, like almost same. The variance you are looking. But now overlapping. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's overlapping. Always it was overlapping, but yeah, it's like much closer now. So how do we know these are two normal distributions? I mean, this graph looks so different. What these are normal? Two, two normal. Uh, this this is a combination of two normal distributions. Is how is it right. coming? Yeah, so two normal distribution. Yeah, we are just discussing about those things only, right? The mixture of Gaussian, okay. mixture of normal distributions only. So, even the Gaussian, they are normal. 
Then, yeah, both are normal. Yeah. Okay. okay. We just have to discuss. Normal. Yeah, everywhere we have to discuss just two normals only. We don't have to discuss anything else. Okay. There can be, but we don't have to discuss it here. Okay. Can you say about the inform about the information of the pi one and pi two? It will be same, right? You can see that it's a symmetrical graph. Okay. And the variance also looks to be similar. So the variance is same, and the peak value is also same. Because as the variance is same and is looking symmetrical, you can just say about the information. Can you say about this the second plot, the second example? Just that pi two is bigger. Yeah, pi two is bigger than pi one. Correct. So pi two is much bigger. Like much means like it will be something point eight, point two, or point seven, point three, something like that. Okay. Yeah, so you can see the. Yeah, yeah. So it's like point three, point seven. Correct. But okay. why variance is same in this? In this one. Yeah. Yeah, because the spreadness is same, right? Okay. See from the look. You can see that the spreadness almost. If you will plot it, it'll be like similar plot. The spreadness would be same. That's why. So that is how we are able to say about the peak. If the variance was different, we were not in that much position to say about the pi also, because we already know that the peak depends upon both pi plus the variance. For some plot, there is a possibility that. Pi one is much higher, not much higher, like zero point six and zero point four. But the plot, if you'll see, that will be almost similar because maybe there's a possibility that for this plot the variance would be higher. Okay, sorry, for this zero point six, there can be a possibility that the variance is higher and the peak came down. Okay. So if we are knowing that the variance is same or the spreadness of the data is same, then one you will be able in the position to say about the pi and pi two. At least the comparison part you can do that. <coughs> Let's come down. Okay, so this is like done. This is already we have information. This information we have discussed about. Yeah. Okay. So one more thing is if you have to. For any data point, is, so the the base Bayesian part we have discussed that the the base theory were able to calculate something. And what was that something is if you have been given the data point and then for the given data point you have to say about the probability that from which component it is coming. Then you were using the Bayesian base theorem, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I am giving you one example. So this this was the plot. This is the plot that we are discussing from the starting. Now tell me about so for this data point for yeah, minus zero point one, you can use the formula and calculate. Okay. You don't have to use the formula. Just tell me the information without even calculating with the help of formula. So here is you have been given a data point minus zero point one. So you have been given the GMA model also, and now the data point minus point one. And now you have to say that from which. Uh, what is the probability that it is coming from the first component? So this is the first component, and this is the second component for the GMM model. And now you have been given the data, so you have been some condition has been given that the minus zero point one is coming. What is the probability that it is coming from the first component? It Can will be normal. It will be normal pi one, mu one, and sigma one. Yeah, so if you have to calculate during the formula, you can calculate it. There is not much issue, but it will take a time. No, I'm just asking you. You don't use the formula. You can do it like n1. You can put the value of x here. Okay, in the first normal distribution, calculate it, and then you do the summation n1 plus pi2 n2. So you will be getting the exact value. That is for sure. But now I'm just asking you. Do not calculate that. Just tell me the value, like the approx value. Okay, it is nearer to zero. It is nearer to point five. It is nearer to one. So, what is what is that value? This is what I'm asking. Nearer to one. Maybe. Okay. How um, like because, okay nearer to one. So, how many of you are saying this is nearer to one? Yes, sir. Yeah, it will near, be near, near to one. Nearer to one. Yes. Okay, nearer to one. Why not related like nearer to point five? Because we see in the graph. So talking, minus. are you talking about cluster number or probability? The probability value for this. The probability region. around point six, point seven, I would say, point seven. Okay, okay. And whoever was saying nearby to one, what was the reason that you were saying there? Because it is 
it looks on that side, closer to that cluster, so on the graph. Correct. Correct. So it will be almost similar, like it will be amazed, like it's like almost one. Because see, <coughs> there's a very high probability for any data point, which is the, in the left side of the zero, there's a very high probability that it will be coming from one. There is a chance that it will be coming from the second also, but that will be very less. Even though if you'll calculate from the exact formula, whatever we have given, from there also, if you'll calculate, you'll be amazed to see that it will be almost similar to one. So there is a very high probability that this value will be coming from the first component. Okay. And there's a very less chance of this getting from the second component. Okay. Similarly, if you have any data point that is in the right side of the zero, you'll be seeing that there's a very high probability that will be coming from the second component and very less probability that will be coming from the first component. Can you say about the zero? What will the value for this? You should be, you can say the exact value also, I guess. 0.5. Yeah, this will be 0. 0.5. Is there any doubt in this? Zero will be like almost point, like not almost the exact point, point 0.5, the probability value. Okay. And for the point 0.1? Closer to the second. Uh, 0.02. 0.02. Yeah, it will be very closer Point. to zero. Opposite of that first one. Yeah, because just asking point one belongs to one, the first component. If you would have asked about the point one belonging to second component, it would be very high, closer to one. But here it's just asking about the point one belongs to the first component. So the probability value must be very small. It's not it. Sir, uh, can I ask why you have written prior and posterior on the uh, on the titles? Because the, the, yes, it sir. doesn't look like prior and posterior here. No, no. So it's just written that you can think of this pi k as a prior information that the this percentage of the data is coming from uh, the, the 50 percent or the some pi percentage of the data is coming from the first component and pi two com the percentage of data is coming from the second component. But after looking at the data, now you are making your belief stronger. Correct. After looking the data point, okay, this all the data points coming from which of the component. Now you are making your belief stronger. Correct. This is what the prior and posterior written here. So the pi was basically, you can think of this as a prior information. And after doing this, you are coming out to be some conclusion, right? This is what has been written. That's why it's like prior and posterior everywhere. Written. It's not much has been discussed in the lecture. So I didn't discuss it. So you can think of in that way also. Right? Okay. Similarly, for the second example that we have seen, can you say about the inform like, so you have got the information. So for each of the data point, can you give me an idea for point one with the reason it can be wrong. It's like fine. It's like even if I'll be writing, it will be get confused with that. But okay. For point one, what can be the value? It will be closer to point close. five. Point six. Point six, point seven, I think for uh, point, point one. Close to one. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. So it is this point one. Correct. So there's two things that you have to consider. First, the 30% of the data point is coming from the first component and 70% of the data point is coming from the, the second component. If it was 50, 50, then you would have said that it was much closer. It must be 0.9 or 0.98, something like this. Correct. Now this 30%, then it is almost similar to point. Like, I guess it was like 0 0.85, 0 0.9, something like that. So, okay. It's like 0 0.93. This is also a strong value. But yeah, much like it's lesser than 0.98 at least. The earlier cases we have seen that any data point was much like closer, like it was not closer even, it was distant, but as compared to the second component, it was closer to the one and you have got stronger value, like closer to one. But in this case, if you see that 0.1 is here, almost here, right? Then also you are getting not very high, like it's high value, but it's not as high as 0.98 or 0.98. That is, it is reducing that part. At least some part it is reducing that. And what was the factor? That pi one was the factor. That the, the less percentage of the data is coming from this first component. That's why it has just reduced some what the value. Okay. If I've been asked in the exam also, you'll not be asked the exact value for sure. It'll be something like closer to 0.8 or 0.7, and that will also be not closer. The options will also be not closer. It'll be like something closer to one or closer to 0.7, something like that. So can you say about the point two 
Find two is here, like so almost similar position. Closer to first hundred. Will be what? Closer to what? Point eight or closer to point five or closer to one. So which of the three will be correct? So, uh, so if we see the two means zero and point seven, so the midpoint is somewhere. Can we do that like this? Midpoint is like point three five. So if it is less than point three five. It's this is point seven. Was... Okay, one midpoint is zero and one. No, you can't say for this. See, for uh, this type of plot, you can't say directly because now there is one thing. There is a weightage of the data point that is coming from one and two. There is a very high weightage of data point coming from the two. So whenever you are generating a well data points, there is a very high chance that it will be coming from two. It's not symmetrical, right? There is no this information. So in the this example. There was a the, the the toss whenever we were having two component or two box, okay. And there was a whenever we the the coin the coin was not biased. Whenever we we're uh, doing the like whenever so the if the coin is not biased, you were getting the probability of 0.5, 0.5, right? But if you have a biased coin, that means there is a high chance that you will be getting the Data point from the second component, and there is a less chance that you'll be getting the data from the second, uh, the first component. Correct. So that is why you have to take into the consideration of that value, like the, the the percentage of data which are coming. So pi value also should be there in your consideration. Okay, to tell about any values. Okay. So so if for this example, you can't say directly that. So whichever the data point which are closer to zero, there will be much much higher. So that you can't say. It'll be higher. That is for sure. But it'll be lesser as compared to it was the value of point five point five. Okay. At least we know that it is more on the first side. Yeah, it will be more. That is if for sure. Yeah. yeah. But see, if if it was something like this, if this was point nine zero and this was point zero one. Then it would have nullified that also. And the variance will also matter. Here it's same, but if the variance of one is higher, will it change things? Yeah, variance. Yeah. If you are changing the variance, then also the the things will change. Yeah. See, if you are spreading the for one data for one uh, dis, uh, component, if you are spreading the variance, that means. What the, the the height will also come down, correct? Yeah. So it's harder to predict and better to calculate. Yeah, but the, I don't think so. Anybody will be asking you the exact value. But yeah, so for this example, can you anyone say about which of the following option will be correct for the point two? Whether it is closer to one or point five or point eight. So you can see that if when the point one was very closer, it was point nine three. So the third option is pakka incorrect because it was closer, a little bit closer. So for the point one, which was very close to the mean, that even was led to like uh, nearby to the point nine. So how can this point two be nearer to one? This is not possible. Correct. It should it should be around point eight. Yeah, it should be around point eight. So there's like point five also should not be there. Point eight is the only condition that that will suffice. That will satisfy for point two. Correct. And what can you say about the point three now? Is it clear for the point two? Is it clear to everyone for the the information that has been given? See, even though you can calculate with the formula, so you can just put the values and get the answer. That is fine. For point three, what can be the value for point three? It will be near zero point five something. Zero point five. Yeah, it will be near by two point five. Correct. Point six. Five point six point six probably. Yeah, point five or point six. That yeah. too. We if can't. You... Also, we can't say about that. We'll see, point will be almost similar to point five or point six. It will be much closer to. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, if you don't mind, can you please solve one with the formula too? 
formula it's like very difficult to get the values first of all for the normal distribution how can you get those there should be some plot the g plot or something yeah, should be given to get the information yeah so that is why i was saying that uh, formula also nobody like i don't think so it will be asked. yeah for this is important they can ask you the plot and then can ask you the option that the similar option they can ask you closer to and the the, 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 the option all the four options will be very apart so there won't be any confusion also so for this also for point 3 we were saying look like much closer to point 5 or point 6 that is correct so it will be <coughs> must be around yeah it's like point 4 6 like closer to point 5 So how change in value of pi will affect this? So suppose pi one was even smaller than point one and or point two, uh, then how would we say about this value? Okay, see, uh, point three will be somewhat here, right? If you are plotting this, okay, it's fine. Point three was somewhat here, correct? And as compared to point one and point two, it will be lesser than point three. That is for sure because there is a there will be a less chance that point three will be belonging to point one, uh, like the first component, as compared to point two and point three. Correct? Yeah, but it will stay close to point five. Right? So how it will change? It will be. Will it stay close to point? Five. Even if pi one was point one, point two. See, if you will say about okay, so for point five, can you say what will be the probability that it will belong to one first component? It will be much much lesser, Very correct? Less. As compared to three, four also, right? So pi is not changing much for the those ends. The yeah, pi is fixed. I'm asking. No, pi. I'm asking if. You had a smaller pi one and a bigger, what more than this? What we see? How does it change the midpoint uh, predictability? I mean, is it? Okay, if we so pi how one much is. We is move? Let's say pi one is point one. Okay, so much lesser than the point. Yeah. Okay, this is point nine. So there is a very the probability value will even lower than whatever we are getting it now. Point for the point three. Okay, point three be, will be much less. It will be something estimate. around point two. Yeah. It will be something around point two or point three, something like that. Because okay. now there is very less chance. Like even though the point itself is very less from the pi one, so the plot will be almost sim like not the similar one. It will be something going go down, correct? And this peak will go much higher. As because now. Very less ten percent of the data point. Whatever we were having, we were having hundred data points. Only ten data point was from the pi one. So earlier it was thirty. At least for out of hundred, thirty data point was from the first component. And now we have declined it to the ten percent only. So ten percent of the data point is for any data point. If you are taking out, there is a very less chance from the starting itself that is coming from the first component. Correct? Okay. Yeah. So uh, from the starting itself, it was very less. Whenever you calculate the value also, so you multiply with some pi one, right? Pi one. So as you are taking, if you are getting, you have to know that this data point is coming from the first component. You are multiplying with that pi first, right? So in the starting earlier, it was you were multiplying with some thirty percent. Now you are multiplying with zero point one, correct? With the same normal distribution, not the same, but the Uh, the information. If the other part is same, then you will be getting the same value, right? So even you are declining, de decreasing the numerator itself. The denominator will be always similar. Okay, sir. So that's why the the value will start decreasing. The normal probability will be scaled down. Normal probability will be scaled down by pi one. Yeah, it is yeah. only point one. Ha ha. If this is point one, then it will up like down scale further. Now similarly for point four also, you can say it will be much lesser than the point four. It will be something point two or point three something like that. And for the point five, as it is much closer to the uh, the first second component, right? So there will be very less probability that it will go in the first uh, component. Correct? So it will be very less point one something like that. 
Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. You can see that really like the 0.5 with the probability was very less. So this, this part is clear, I guess, to everyone. How will you calculate? And this is important. This can be asked in the exam, this exam also. So this is important that the plot can be given and then you have to take out. Okay. So now we'll come up with the how will you estimate the value. Okay, first we'll discuss how many component if you have k component, what are the parameters that we have to estimate? How many parameters are there that we have to estimate? Can somebody tell me what number number of parameters that we have to estimate? Sir, in the above example, what mm -hmm. role will the variance play, sir? See, as the variance, there won't be any problem. Like there can be a problem, but I don't think so. They'll be giving you with a different variance. As the variance would be same, then you can say something about the probability. Just looking at that. If the variance is also different, then you have to use the formula only. There is no other chance to calculate this. Okay? Because one thing should be fixed for sure. Then only you can get an idea about the probability value. Like so, at least the which, yeah. Zero point four is near to zero point eighteen one eight. Can you please explain that? Huh, this is asking for the first component. 0 0.4 is belongs to what's the probability that the given data point, point 0.4 belongs to the first component, not the second one. So point 0.4, if you have been asked, is where well, if you have to just think of that is closer to which component, first or second? Point 0.4. Okay, okay. So this relate to second component, right? And yeah. there is a high chance that it will belong, it will come, it is coming up. Uh, coming out from the second component cell, right? But because seventy percent of the information or the data point is coming from the second component, and this is nearby to the second component also, so the probability for this point five going to the second component will be high, but the probability that the point four is coming from the first component will be much lesser, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So this is asking for the component which is coming from the first component. This point four coming from the first component, not the second component. So zero point four belongs to second. Uh, second component that's why it is less uh, the probability of uh, getting 0.4 from the second component is very high okay. that's why the probability that the 0.4 is coming from the first component will be less both can't be like higher or both can be lower so there will be for sure one will be higher and one will be lower sir okay. sir if yeah. the pi is same pi 1 and pi 2 both are 0.5 and the variance is different then what can we say uh, then you can get an idea. So if the pi one and pi two are same, that the 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 equal percentage of the data is coming from both the point. That means that at least the pi one pi two things is gone. Like you don't have to consider pi one pi two because both are symmetrical. Only the variance part is there. Correct. So basis. So see if we have some information. We were having an example of that. No, right. The variance was different. No, we didn't plot any. <coughs> yeah, so for this example, correct? Here we were having the different, uh, we were having the same pi 1, pi 2. Yes, sir. Correct? But we were having a different uh, spreadness of the data point, right? This is much more spreader than the first one. So now, what is the probability of a point of minus minus 0.5 okay this one right so yes, see uh -huh. so for getting this value this will be almost same for from the first perspective if you are seeing from the first perspective from the first component this is the first component and this is the second component okay so there is a way like by at least this this is gone because you don't have to consider about which person what percent of data is coming from which you just have to think of which like this point is closer to which uh, uh, component this is much closer to the first one as compared to the second component correct but the second component the spreadness is more right the spreadness is more means even though the data point is coming here there is a like not much high but there is a large probability that it will be coming from the second component as the spreadness is very high similarly the probability value will be almost like around something if if you are just asking that point uh, this value is coming from the first component that will be much like at least the probability for the getting from the one will be much higher than the second one that is for sure correct 
but if you have a data point something nearby to there where the distance is almost same from the first and the second then you can say that there is a high probability that it will be coming from the second component because as the variance is the spreadness is higher than as compared to the first one did you get the point okay so the probability of a point belonging to a mixture will be i which has higher variance yeah if if the point is somewhat equally distant from the first and the second for those point you can say that it's coming from the second point like higher probability and if a point that is nearby to the second component for those cases to pakka you can say that okay yes sir okay. yeah but i don't think so and so nobody is going to ask you for the 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 this uh, distinct variance yeah so if you have a k component so you are already aware that gma model has a k component so what is the number of parameter that we have to estimate so for any gma model if you have k component so for each component let's for example it starts with 1 2 3 and then this is k so for the first <coughs> What are the values that you have to estimate? Three k, three k minus one. Okay, how how are you getting this three k minus one? What is the value for the for the first so, so mu the... mu mu and sigma two two into k, and then the uh, pi is addition of one. So instead of k, you can take one less and you get the last one. Yeah, correct. So for each of the component, each of the box, first of all, you have to for generating, you have to choose the k first. Correct. So for choosing the k, you have some probability value pi one to pi k. And now, if you are going inside this first first box, you are having two component, two parameter, right? Mu that is mean and sigma. Similarly, for the second com uh, box also, you have mu and sigma. So this is mu one, mu mu one, and sigma one, mu two, sigma two. Similarly, for the kth one also, you will be having mu k and sigma k. Correct. So for each of the box, you have having pi one and sigma one, uh, uh, mu one. So mean and variance and the pi for each of the component, right? So you have three k. Why are we doing minus one? He told something, right? He told what he said. So the summation of pi should be equals to one. Correct. You are already aware of that that the summation of pi should be equals to one pi k, and k belongs to one to k. so that's why we are subtracting one as if we are able to know the k minus 1 value of pi you can get the other one the last one by just subtracting it from the so doing the summation of the other pi and subtracting it from the one you will be getting the kth component the pi kth so basically how many parameter you have to estimate 3k minus 1 correct yes sir yes yeah So now you have to write the likelihood function. So you are using the log maximum likelihood estimation. How will you do that? You have to first for doing that. What generally you write? You do write the likelihood function. And how can you write the likelihood function for this case? You have to first write the marginal distribution. So first you wrote the marginal distribution, and you have to do it for all the data points. Correct? So how can you do that? So you have this function. If you have to like write the likelihood function. For any given data points, how can you write it? It will be in the product form, right? You have to just take out the product for each of the data points. Correct? Pi k n of x mu k sigma k square. So for each of the data points, not just for the one point, for each of the data point, whatever has been given, you have to do the product. If you have five data points, so you have to take it first. You have to pi k from which data point is coming. And then n of this first data point. Similarly, for the second data point, from third point, fifth point, fifth sixth point. So, and then you have to do the product of that. This is what you do in the likelihood function. Similarly, you are doing for the Bernoulli also. If you have a Bernoulli with one zero one, so you are doing what? P k square into one minus P. For each of the probability value, you are doing the multiplications. For each point, what is the probability value? So, for here, for the continuous function, we do the density estimation. So, we use the density function. so we have the density function already the marginal density function and then you are for the five whatever the number of data points are there for each of the data point you have to write it do the multiplication correct so for each of the data point you have to write the density or the at that point 
because you can't write the probability value for this. And then you have to do the product of each of the values. Correct? What generally we do, used to do for the likelihood? What was the next step that we do? Taking log. Yeah, you take the log for that function. So you do that, you take the, you first write the likelihood function and it will be the, so you took the, uh, the FX, we were having the marginal density function and then for each of the data point we took from I to N and then we took the log. Correct? What is the next step? The product can be? Okay. So the, the what is the issue that is happening here? Why are we not able to use the log likelihood here? Sum inside log is difficult to handle. Yeah, very correct. So you have so we have changed this. First, you have you took the product and then you have uh, applied the log here. So there you change in the form of sum. But now the problem is inside the FX also you have something, right? Inside the FX also you have the summation part. And summation inside the log now you can't do much. Correct? So now you have to do, you have to use something, Jensen inequality, correct? So we'll discuss the Jensen inequality now. So I have a doubt. Uh, I don't yeah. understand how there's three K minus one parameters. Okay, see. So basically what happens is for any GMM model, so this is clear, right? You have K component. Correct. Right? That K is plus clear. That is clear. So you have K component. And for the K component, let's, for example, you have a dice with K sides. Okay. You have thrown the dice and then you got something, right? Okay. The first, first one. So you went to the first box. Correct. And what is the inside the first box? It's, it'll tell you. So the, to generate a model, to generate a data point, the first step was to choose the component. So throwing the dice will give you the component number in which company you have to go. The second was to generate a data point. To generate a data point, you should be knowing the what is the distribution here. And it is a Gaussian distribution. Yes. So for the Gaussian, what are the components that, what are the parameters that you estimate? Mu and K, sigma, right? If you are knowing the mu and sigma, then you can know about the Gaussian distribution. Correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Similarly, you have the K, what do you call that? K side of the dice, right? So similarly, you can get the K number of K component. Correct? So for each of the component, you'll be having mu and sigma because all of them are Gaussian. Yes, sir. Correct? And, but there is a one more thing. So for each of them, so you can write it directly to K fine, because for each of the component for K component, you need for each of the component, you need two parameters. So two K. K. Yeah. Now that uh, next part is to, how will you choose which one to choose? Like which component you have to go, which one, which box you have to choose that has been decided by the dice, right? Yeah. The problem. Uh, yeah. Problem. Right. So to get first dice there is a probability right if you are throwing a dice if, if earlier it was a k equals to six so there is a probability one up by six right if this is unbiased dice, yes right so this probability value should also be estimated correct yes sir. so for each of the dice if you are throwing that you are getting let's for example for the first if you are getting pi one you are going to the first one if you are getting pi two you are going to the second box so as we have k side of the box You'll be getting some chi, pi k also, right? For the kth component. Yes, sir. That also it needs to be updated, estimated. So it will be what k plus k, correct? Correct. Yeah. Now one more thing. As you already know that for the dice, the summation of the probability of getting one to six will be equals to one, right? Yeah. The probability. Yeah. If you have a, if you are throwing a dice, the probability of getting if it was k equals to six, you already know that one upon six plus. Similarly, one upon six, this was equals to one. The probability value of getting it like any of the six will be one. Correct? Summation of all the properties is yeah. one. Yeah. So here also the summation of all the pi should, should be equals to one. Correct. Now, if you have throwing the dice for the five sides, you know the probability. You can get the sixth one, right? By just sum it up, sum okay, this yeah. all five probability and then subtract it from the one. Okay. So minus one. Okay. Yeah. Good. So here also, if you are knowing for the K minus one term pi value, you can subtract it from one minus summation of all the pi mm -hmm. k minus one, yes, correct? Okay. To get the pi kth value. Pi k. Correct. So yes. you will be subtracting it one. So that's why we have got three k minus one. Okay. 
so we need to uh, okay okay estimate 3k minus 1 parameter yeah you need to estimate 3k minus 1 parameter for oh, this yes version. thank you yeah so let's move to the next part so the next word uh, so you have calculated the likelihood function and now you will see that with the help of some jensen inequality we will be changing this to some different uh, equation and then from there we will be doing something so let's come to the, here so in the maximum likelihood function now we have calculated the uh, we have calculated the likelihood function and then took the log and as we are aware of that we are getting something summation inside the log now it is very difficult so now we have to use something else we have to use some jensen inequality so basically jensen inequality for the some concave function we can write it in so jensen inequality you are clear right or we need to discuss that so for any convex function you know how do, do you write for the uh, where is that point? yeah so this is the lecture slide i guess uh, it is discussed yeah for any convex function you can write it something like this for any upward function for convex okay this is clear for convex function you can write it like this correct for any function if you have been function like this and this is the value for a plus b by 2 and this value will always be greater than function fa plus fb by 2 so this value will always be greater than at if you have a as one value and x a b as one other value and if you are calculating the if you are calculating the value at fa plus b by 2 that will be much smaller at equals to fa plus fb by 2 this is what has been written here also for the convex function this you are already aware of that right how do you uh, what are the sum of the features for the convex function this is the one of the most important feature of the convex function correct yes sir. yeah for the convex function similarly you can write it for the concave also so the concave will be what opposite of this function for the concave you can write it like this right and here only the jensen inequality has been used for any function yeah so the one more important thing is there must be something so you can see that uh, yeah this one this information so for any con concave function or convex function like what is the inequality will get changed for the concave function if you have something like this function of lambda multiplication of some a1 plus lambda to a2 something like that you can write it that is that will all, always be greater than this value and this is what we are using it here this statement only we are using it for our convenience we were having some function so we were having what we were having something log log in we have are having some summation inside log right so this inequality and we are okay tell me first the log is a concave or convex function Concave. What? Concave. Yeah, this is a concave function, right? So if it is a convex concave function, you can use the this statement, right? Because this statement will follow for all the concave function. So this is what we are using it here also. We are using the same thing here. Right. Yeah, as this is always this will follow always, we are using the same thing. This condition itself we are using for the instant inequality. This is what we are using. As we are taking out in spite of this f, we are using log. So function we are using log here. Right? If you see that we were having this equation, correct? We were having this likelihood function log, and inside that log, we were having some summation. So if we'll compare it with this, now you don't have so a k you have, but lambda k you don't have, correct? So you, you need some thing where the summation of this lambda k should be equals to 1. Okay, you can see that we were having a function. So, can you compare this to? Yes, sir. Lambda is same as pi. Uh, so, one more thing. So, you have to introduce other yeah. So, the one most important thing is you are not considering lambda here as a pi here. So see the summation of lambda is equals to one. That is fine. But the problem is 
we have to estimate the value of so you must be in so the problem here is if you are not introducing any other thing if you are not introducing any other variable like the lambda or anything else if you are not able to introduce it so the later part what was happening that you were not able to so the pro, see here we are using why we are using jensen first of all we are using jensen because we are not able to get the we are not able to maximize the function the log function we were having you were having something uh, the summation inside the log function and that function you were not able to maximize that function okay so that's why you have came to the jensen equality and you should be using if you are coming up to some conclusion that you have to use the jensen equality then you have to introduce something else with the pi you were even though the pi the summation of pi was equals to 1 but the the problem is if we have further uh, if you have just went with the pi k itself you were not able to do whatever we were wanting to so we basically want to maximize the function the likelihood function whatever we were having so the original function even though the, after introducing only with the with the value of pi k the modified whatever the modified uh, the function that we got we got with only pi k we were not able to uh, do the maximization of that modified function also did you understand that see if i if i understand you correctly sir we started with the log likelihood when we started with the log likelihood and took the log inside the log we found that there was a summation or a sum correct and log cannot handle sum so we used jensen equality to convert that sum into a single uh, into a single uh, component yeah, which can then thing, yeah. be handled correct correct see now so the only not the handling part we have to do something else we have to maximize to get you have to estimate the value also so estimating the value see jensen inequality what jensen was helping if see even though if you are just converting this uh, whatever the function you were having the log uh, likelihood function you are just modifying that function and after modification also if you are not able to estimate it there's no use of that correct so what happens is whenever you were not introducing any value with if you are going with directly with the pi k as you are thinking that the summation of pi k is also equals to 1 later the modified likelihood function was also not able to estimate the value so that's why we have come up with the different variable itself the pi lambda k and you will see that the lambda k is a different the lambda i k generally tells you about for each of the data point you know for each of the data point in which of the kth component is coming from so later you will see that what is that lambda i k so we have introduced something lambda i k so lambda i k basically tells you the probability or the chances that this point actually comes from this cluster approximate the probability correct correct so whatever we have calculated in the starting the bayesian term we have estimated right base we have calculated something bayesian right so this this one this term for any data point if you have been given the data one what's the probability that is coming from the kth component so this is basically the lambda i k so just that uh, then the pi is the average of all the lambdas right across all data points that is what we can think of it right so pi 1 should be average of all the lambda i lambda ones of of all the data points no see for the hard clustering you can say that for the hard means like you are just restricting some point it is going to the first cluster itself but here it is not so right here it is soft clustering soft clustering means you are giving the probability value right so if you are doing the weighted average then you can say okay that is fine weighted average is the pi k like that means if you have a, let's for example you are having the 100 data points right if you can't say directly that this is the five point that is belonging to the first cluster because we are giving for each of no, the no, data points no i'm not yeah i'm okay. not saying that i'm i'm just saying like uh, in parallel to lambda k so if i know the say for example lambda the first cluster's lambda one for all the data points so there are 100 data points then pi of that one cluster would be average of all the lambda ones of across 100 data points that is how i can think of pi as right yeah pi that you can say yeah you can do yeah, the, yeah yeah correct correct so you can do the averaging of whatever the yeah, lambda okay, is thanks, you're yeah, getting yeah. and then divided with the end yeah that you can say and you will see that after using the lagrange multiplier or like the estimating part you will see that will be con concluding i guess to the same point whatever you are saying so, so yeah, yeah understood 
yeah this is clear right so why we are not not using pi so there there is other reason also that that uh, we need to search it and think of why why this pi k uh, is not been used one reason we can think of is this one because if it was with the help of pi only if we were able to estimate why are we introducing something else we are not able to get it whatever we were wanting to to estimate the values that's why we have introduced some other thing okay this is the one reason the other reason we need to search it out even i am not aware like of why are we not exactly using because one of the condition is been satisfied right the summation of pi k is equals to 1 correct no but uh, using that um, jensen's inequality we are going to each individual data point to sum it sum the log right so that's why introducing lambda instead of pi so that i can calculate the the cluster distribution within each data point correct 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 that is so what this i is the one reason yeah correct this is the one reason that's why we are introducing some other value but the one confusion can be for some people why can't we go with the lambda k as the condition for the jensen is only this one the summation of this lambda should be equals to 1 there can be one confusion but yeah so this is the one appropriate reason for that is because we are we are introducing lambda because with the help of pi k we were not able to know in from much information about each of the data points right if after introducing lambda ik at least we are able to know the information about each of the data point correct but the percentage that is coming from the first cluster or eighth cluster correct right right yeah okay. sir yeah sir so the main problem with the normal log likelihood is that there is a sum inside log and which we cannot differentiate yeah that also you can think of yeah you can't handle that yeah maybe differentiation also you can't do so that's why we use jensen's inequality to make it a, a sum of logs yeah so basically the jensen won't be giving you the same exact likelihood but it will be justing just update that modify that and it will be giving you some different not that totally different no, no. but it will be give, yeah the sum modified version of that algorithm uh, not algorithm some modified version of the function okay yes sir yeah so see you can see that after modifying that <coughs> after so we have modified it by we, we just took it some lambda so some variable we took okay and then by the comparing we have converted that function to a modified log function this is what we have done first of all <clears throat> and well, yeah so coming up with here so yeah so this is just the discussion of the jensen how can you use the jensen inequality and there are some other things also uh, that uh, there was uh, some paper where it was written like how at which point basically uh, you are able to use this like whenever the equality will hold or there were other reasons also that was given here i mean like i'm not uh, totally aware of that like at which point will hold like the, the jensen quality will be uh, holding and at which point we were able to estimate those values so there are some reasons behind that so basically we call this as a see what happens is uh, whenever you are writing this the the whole equation whenever you are converting that log function into some modified log function you will see that it will be coming up in the form of some estimated value ex so not estimated the expected value of something so some function ex uh, expected value of some function you will be getting okay and this is basically from there only we have came up with the am algorithm because the expectation part you are getting it from the jensen inequality itself so there will so this function will get converted into some expected form the expected value of some different function whenever you are modifying this so you have modified this function so basically you have modified this function and modif modification of this function we got something now you have two different type of parameters now you have to estimate the value this lambda also came right to so lambda also there is one more variable so one more thing happened is whenever you are you have now lambda and the parameter the earlier parameter that you have estimated okay now what can we do is so see how we have came up with the em algorithm is see 
we were having the this this became now a clustering problem and for this clustering problem we don't have anything like even though we don't know about the inform we don't know much information about from which data point uh, which is coming you don't have the information about the lambda also and the other parameter also correct so this this, this become a chicken and egg problem right you, you don't know anything like you don't have the information for the first case also you don't know the information for the parameter also so for the chicken and egg problem what generally you do is you start estimating you just start with some value random values correct and then you start up, updating those values this is what you were doing the k min also sorry knn also what you have predicted correct yes sir <sighs> see okay i'll start with uh, this again so what we were doing is so we were having a so we have calculated the likelihood function and then we took it the log and then we were thinking that we are stuck because we are having some summation inside the log function so what we have done is we have taken the jensen inequality okay we have take the help took the help of jensen inequality and then modify the function and the modified function is what so we have got modified function so these are all the information why can we use all those values and the same explanation is been given here so now we have some lambda ik so we have introduced some lambda ik here and here so that just to convert that in the form of modified log function and now you can see that this is <coughs> now you can see that this is uh, the uh, the updated version you can get it like this see so jensen quality was holding something if you have a function you can write it in this form and this will be greater than equals to for the concave function if you are writing that will be greater than equals to summation of k equals to 1 k lambda k f of a k correct now if you we'll compare it you have got the lambda and you have got some function also correct so this was your jensen inequality so can i just summarize the steps till this point maybe yeah, yeah. you'll correct so we started off with a basic mle approach and try to do a log likelihood estimate in that log likelihood estimate we encountered a summation within the log function which is which cannot be handled under normal circumstances so for that we decided to compromise some part of the precision and introduce jensen's inequality which gives a lower bound and but converts the summation which is let's say f of lambda a plus lambda b lambda 1 a plus lambda 2 b plus lambda 3 c to it can break it up into different components let's say f of lambda 1 a1 plus uh, f of lambda 2 b plus f of lambda 3 c because that's a jensen inequality now this allows the summation within the log to be broken up into different log components and thus you can handle the initial summation within the log which you are not able to do so so for that the professor first took the log likelihood explained the summation then explained jensen inequality then showed that jensen inequality can handle summation by breaking up the summation into different components which can then be handled in the log function and thus these three steps that you have written came up and in that to make sure that the uh, the uh, form of the equation is correct he introduced a lambda variable so that you get the lambda a plus lambda b plus lambda lambda 1 a plus lambda 2 b plus lambda 3 c once he did that and he wrote the last line which you have written in or which is printed on this slide then he explained that this also allows you to interpret the lambda parameter as a soft clustering parameter right i think does that yeah. summarize what? yeah yeah correct correct okay. yeah and and yeah so you can think of this this will be your uh, if you will compare it you'll get to know about the modified log function or the modified function and modified function basically is the lower bound of the original function whatever the true function was there you'll give it from the jensen inequality you'll get the lower bound of that function at some fixed lambda right So if you are just fixing for any choice of the lambda, you'll be getting some. Uh, if you are changing the value of lambda, you'll be getting a different lower bound, correct? At some theta. So, is this clear? That the, this statement is very important because when you will see the EM algorithm, this statement itself is the whole 
will describe the, this statement only. So the whenever you are modifying the like likelihood function or the, the function whatever we are having, we are basically modifying that function. And what that modification will give you will give you the lower lower bound of the true function and lower bound of the true function at some theta fixed some theta value. Whenever for the some if you are already fixing the lambda, so for for each of the lambda that you are fixing, you'll be getting a different lower bound, correct or not? Is this clear? Lower bound will mean that modified function is less than the actual. Yeah, yeah, that will be less than actual. And if you're changing the lambda value, you'll be able to change the lower bound, that the function itself. See, for if I'll come up directly here. So there is, so see, you can think of this as a, I'll just discuss the slide point. And so then the I'll original go. likelihood function, if you fix a lambda, that value will be greater than the value which we get from modified log. Yeah, so see you can, here you can see that the rate one is the true log, the true function that was earlier. Okay, and we were not able to do the uh, estimation from the rate one. So we have modified the function. You can think of this at theta t minus one. So I, what did I say? For any of the true, uh, the uh, any of the function that has been given, you are modifying the function. And the modification of the function is the lower bound for the original function at some theta. So at some theta t minus one, you can think of that this point at theta t minus one, you are modifying this function and you got this blue curve. So this is the lower bound of the original function, the red one, correct? So basically the original function cannot be calculated at all. So rather than leaving the function uncalculated or using very complex calculations, we use Jensen's inequality to lower the, the precision, but still get a lower bound. So a lower correct. bound is far better than no bound at all because you can't calculate the bound. Correct. I so at theta, yeah, theta t minus one, you can see that the lower bound you are getting some. So it will be having some different for different lambda. So now for the perfect lambda, you are able to get this one. So see, you'll be getting all the lower bound, but at some fixed the lambda t, you are able to get this lower bound. Correct. So we maximize over lambda which means we'll get the best lower bound. Is, is it? Yeah, so yeah, best have lower to... bound for a particular lambda. Correct, correct. So now you have got this. Now, so basically you're, there is two steps that you'll go through that in the EM algorithm, right? You'll first start with initializing the value of theta. For each of the theta, for the theta, and then you are to get the lower bound. Now, for the you have started with some theta. Now with the different lambda, with different choice of the lambda, you are able to get the different lower bound. So in the exact this lower bound, you are getting it with some particular lambda value. Okay. So for this lambda t, you are able to get this lower bound, the blue one. Now what you have to do is you have to update the value of theta, right? You have to update. See, one thing if you are able to get, you can do the other thing. Now you're able to get the lambda for the particular choice of lambda, you are able to get this lower bound. Now, can you maximize this function? You can maximize this, right? If you're able to get this blue curve. Yeah. Can you maximize this blue curve? Can you get the theta where the, uh, can you get those parameters where this function is getting maximized, this modified one, the lower bound of this, uh, the curve red one? If earlier you were having this curve itself, can you do the, can you get the parameter where the, the way, like, uh, uh, can you get the parameter theta where the function is getting maximized? If you have been starting, if you have been given this function, can you get this theta, right? You can get this theta, right? Yes, where yes, the, we can yeah, get it. Yeah, we can we get can it. Get. So you can update this. So you have started with initialized with some theta t minus one. Okay. And for that theta t minus one for different value of lambda, you are getting the different uh, modified version, the lower we bound. Gradient descent, for, right? ascent. Huh, gradient ascent, you can use that method. So for some particular lambda t, you have got this bound, okay, lower bound. Now you have fixed this lower bound with this lambda t. Now you are updating the value of theta t. So to get the maximum, uh, uh, the, the, the maxim, to maximize that lower bound. Now you have maximized this lower bound. Now you have reached to this point, right? You have reached to this point. Now corresponding to this point, theta t, because you have reached to this, uh, the, 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 you have reached the max, you have maximized the lower bound, the blue curve. Now you have reached to this theta t. Now for this theta t itself, again, you started looking for the lower bound at this function. Now you are looking at the lower bound. Now you have came with, came up with some lambda. So different, some different lambda dash t. And now for this lambda dash t, you are came with this green curve. 
so lower bound for again the lower bound for this function now you have came up with this lambda t what you have, what you have to do next is you have to update the value of theta again and after updating because you have to get the you have to maximize this blue uh, green curve right and if you are maximizing this you will be coming up with some different lamb theta t right theta t plus 1 now you can see that at this theta t plus 1 you are able to get the maximum of the the, the original function also correct or not so, so at this theta t we are plus lucky one, we got what? the correct theta star actually. yeah you have got that correct theta and theta star or whatever you want to call so we are able to so you can see that even though we are maximizing the modified version or the lower bound we are in the end we are able to get the Exact theta t, right? For the uh, this this red curve, correct or not? So, how do we know when to stop? Yeah, because see, how generally you know for any of the iteration problem, you took it like theta minus theta t should be very small. A small means like it will be some ten to the power minus t. So, whenever the iteration will become such that the difference between the theta and theta t theta t is very small, the theta t and theta t minus one or plus one is very small, you will stop there. Did you get the point? So gradient ascent or whatever you were doing the iteration problem. Whenever the 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 next step and the previous step the difference is very small, you will stop it here. Did you get the point? Okay. So basically, yes, the, yeah. So for I'll, I'll summarize it again. So for the whole in the whole EM algorithm, what generally you do is you start with a the function like load function, and for that function you were not able to estimate it. So what then you do? You modify the function and you use the technique Jensen. You, so you use the concept of Jensen inequality. Okay, with the help of Jensen inequality, you were able to get the lower bound of that function, lower bound of that function at some particular lambda. So for different lambda, you'll be getting a different uh, the, the the lower bound, but will be always smaller than the the function's value, right? Now what you did uh, what did you do? You started with some theta. Okay, so we started with the theta. So let's, for example, this is the, the curve that was there in the starting likelihood function. And for this likelihood function, we were not able to do the complex stuff. So what we only do, you use the Jensen inequality to get the lower bound. For the lower bound, you started with some theta t minus one. You started with some theta t minus one at this point. Okay, you start getting the different uh, lower bound. But for some particular lambda t, you got this lower bound, the best one. Okay, now you got this lambda t, lambda t. Now. After you got the lambda t, you updated the value of theta because you have to update it to get the max to be, because to maximize the lower bound, the blue curve. If you have maximized, you got the theta t plus one, the next theta. Now you have seen that you have to get the lower bound at that theta t. Now you started getting the lower bound at some particular lambda, you will get the best again. And now you have came up with the blue curve, like the green curve. Now you have to maximize this green curve also. After maximize, you got theta t plus one. Similarly, you will do it till the Till you are getting something like this, where the theta t minus theta theta t means the the previous step and the next step. Whenever the difference is very small, you will stop it here, okay? And so, you will come up with some some uh, theta star where this true value is getting maximized. So this can one I, that we'll discuss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there some question or something that uh, what kind of question can we expect that would help us uh, internalize this concept better? If it's a theory question or some other numerical that like for like how you explained the concept of uh, GMM using examples that was very helpful. Yes, yeah. sir. so is there something that we can use to internalize this? Yeah, this Correct. concept itself is very complex. Nobody is going to ask you like in the exam for sure the EM algorithm, the the, the conceptual part. Yes, sir, but the application part would be helpful, right? Yeah, yes, any one or any question anywhere will be very helpful, sir. I think uh, if you could Maybe, uh, go over the sample questions which were given in the dashboard, uh, sir had uploaded the sample questions. If you could go over uh, some of those EM questions, will be great. Sir. Okay. For yes, so of course, graded assignment has its deadline today, and some questions are like that. We're not able to solve that. We are not able to visualize how to do so. It's not like yeah. you know saying yeah. that uh, we don't want to understand theory. Just uh, solve the question. It's like the theory is complex, but maybe one or two examples would help us um, understand, comprehend this yeah. better. Oh, okay, it means like this, and it means like that kind of a thing. Is there something that you can help us with? Not necessarily graded or anything like that. Just anything that you can think of. Even if you can make up a question, that's great. Uh, there, there are some sample questions. I'm not sure if you all have seen it. Uh, week four, week four, right? Those, yeah. I think, those will be great if you could go through because they have 
different types of the same em algorithm applications different types okay so let's i'll just open it so where is that question i have asked them to upload i don't know where they have uploaded sir uh, it should have been in uh... i'll send you the link one second it should have been supplementary content only so you might want to refresh so maybe i have that uh, for the previous term so maybe that would be available i've sent it so you can check it sir it's in the chat mm -hmm. okay yeah so this question i have asked them to upload it okay So see, yeah, this is the problem. Yeah, like this is pretty simple, right? Yeah. Second question: the GMM is fit for the data five data point at some point of time. Some time. So you can skip the the GMM part is okay, sir. On the EM. No, this is EM algorithm, right? At some okay. time step, the EM algorithm, the following oh, at the okay, okay, okay. value of lambda i k has been given. Okay, and then you have been asked what you have been asked to calculate that pi k. So this is like pretty simple, correct? Right? You just have to do the summation divided with the five. So there. So simple for you because you understand the the stuff better. But if you could tell us. Like... Yeah. So see, the one more thing is like, so anything that will be asked or anything that is from the EM algorithm, na mostly it will be like some calculative part and the calculative part you have to should be knowing the formula that i told you like yesterday also there is three four formula that you have to mug up like mug up or or you can somehow uh, read it so four five formulas are there in the em algorithm that you should be knowing and there are questions that you have I have seen the uh, the exam also from the em algorithm so and yeah this is the three formula so the so what has been asked here see you can see that the pi k has been asked right for the after the m step correct Yes, and here it has been given. The formula has been given here. Pi k is the, basically the summation of all the lambda i k divided upon them. Then m step. Ah, okay. Okay, so okay. we just need to sum. Everything will be as C. The three formula is important. So sigma k you can just skip it, but at least the mu and pi k should be knowing. And if you are knowing, you'll be able to solve at least one or two problems in the exam. Okay, okay. So where are these files uploaded? So you had said they are already uploaded somewhere. Yeah, it's already uploaded. That's why he has sent, right? It's uploaded in the uh, supplementary. In supplementary. I don't have to upload it. Yeah, supplementary. Okay. Yeah, so you can solve at least you have, if you are able to solve this five, I, I can uh, tell you that you'll be able to solve the problems in the exam. It's like almost similar. Uh, the concepts are similar. That is for sure. Maybe the the, the pattern be different. Some different questions, but the the concepts are all these five concept questions consist of. Whatever has been discussed in the EM algorithm, or not whole fourth week. One two questions apart, I can think of one or two questions, different type of questions that is not there. That maybe I'll discuss in the revision session. Okay, but at least you should be solving each of the five or six question marks. I mean, so I have told them to upload that uh, for the week one, two, three. Also, it will be uploaded before Wednesday, before that uh, I guess the the revision session, and then. Uh, If you have any doubt, you can. So at least this twenty twenty five question that has been there, you should be knowing each and every questions. And if you are knowing, uh, your path will be simpler for at least for this quiz. So first year. So, so the where question. are the answers? Huh? Sorry, the answers for these questions are available. Ah, uh, that the yeah. So earlier I thought of solving it and upload the solution, handwritten solution, but I've been told you can't upload the handwritten. So uh, okay, I'll uh, give you the answers for this. So the answer I'll be giving you. I'll upload it with uh, the first, second, third, whenever I'll upload it. That will be uploaded first year before Wednesday. So you'll be having three, four days again for that. Uh, you will give answers or you will give solutions, sir. Solution. So I told you, na. No? Uh, solution as opposed to handwritten because I can't type it in the latex. It will take time. So I was supposed right, to. Right, right. Understand. Okay, sir. To write it, but then I was told that you can't upload handwritten. So and answers I'll be giving you for each and every. So I'm uh, sorry. I'm repeating. I'm sorry. I'm confused. So you will give latex solutions, or you will just give answers? Answers only, because okay, latex no late will take time because it will go beyond quiz also. So 
professor then in that case if you can get handwritten solutions we will not tell anyone <laughs> it's not in latex yeah handwritten we... then just yeah in the revision session i'll come up with the solution and then upload it somewhere and then post it on the discord somewhere means right. like uh, maybe in my uh, personal g yeah got it got it yeah, yeah. thank you so much thank, thank you so much sir. i'll do that yeah. one one step back so you were explaining in the graph uh, uh, on how uh, we get the uh, up lower bound and then we change ओवर द अदर so you got the the equation you have got after using the jensen and all everything after getting the function you have got some function okay and after getting that function what you have to do is you have to fix some lambda so so this is because why we are fixing lambda or something else because this is a because we don't know any of the two at least we should be knowing one to get the other this is what happened in the chicken and egg problem you don't know which came first chicken or egg so this this is happening here also so we don't know much about the lambda also theta also so what we are doing if you are fixing the lambda and maximizing over the theta and then you got these three things because why we are writing mml is because this is a modifying modified maximum likelihood that's why we are writing mml so wherever it's like you have been asked to calculate max modified you will be just doing the same formula and this is the same as uh, the clustering that you are doing only one thing getting updated is we are using the modified like mo not modified we are using a uh, weighted version of everything see if you have been calculate if you have asked to calculate the mu also mu means the mean for any cluster what you generally do you do the summation of all the data point divide with the numbers okay but here what you have to do you have to take the the probability stuff also because each of the point can go to any of the uh, each of the point will have a probability value to go in any of the component right so that is why we are taking care of the probability value here not the exact one or zero if you are taking care of one zero only that will become a hard clustering that you have read in the knn correct so similarly for the sigma so this three formula you can remember it like not the sigma square but at least the mean and the the the, the pi that you have got so whenever we are fixing the lambda and then maximize over the theta then you are getting these three things correct and similarly you can fix the value of the other part the theta and get the lambda and this is what happens in the em algorithm also you are starting with some theta you get some the lower bound of the function you are getting some lower bound of the exact true function at some particular lambda you are getting the exact the, the best curve okay the best concave function or sorry uh, concave the best function you are getting and then you are updating that you are uh, updating the value of theta again and again you are getting the th theta you are maximizing the curve you are maximizing the curve to get the theta this is what happening this is what you are doing in the em algorithm also okay so the three this three equation is important so this three whichever is important i'm just telling you this and this is very important that you should be knowing at least to solve if you have been given the data points you should be able to calculate the mu the modified uh, maximum likelihood mean and this lambda uh, pi sorry okay this two thing you should be knowing and we started with the fixed lambda first ha huh. see what i mean see i was having the curve you were having you have modified the function now what you have done is you have fixed the value of lambda correct lambda you are fixing means you are for each of the value for each of the point you are fixing some probability value okay and then maximizing over theta to get the the values this values you have got right and then you are updating it so all those steps are going on sir although this is called soft clustering because we each point can come from any of the clusters yeah there is a probability yeah because we are considering the probability value that's why you are calling it a soft soft and clustering margin margin when i'm giving yeah. a bunch of uh, data points and uh, i'm getting the lambda in the beginning um how do i start i mean um, i know their probabilities from every cluster and every company uh, how do we begin if you're just giving given data what does it mean to say we have fixed lambda like some random value so in the knn also you used to do that right in the starting you just start with some centroid value correct yeah we there we start with the uh, 
Right. Some random values start with right, and then you are updating. Yeah. Correct. The cluster is given. Yeah, we fix those uh, beginning values here. Is it the same? Yeah, this is also the same. You are starting with something, so you are fixing the lambda, and then you have the other theta parameter theta, and then you are maximizing to get the other thing. See, in the EM algorithm also, so this, so the whole step is again came up with. You are just giving a name as EM algorithm, okay? So in the EM algorithm also, what here what we are doing is we are initializing with some theta because we are not knowing anything like even though the lambda and the theta. So if if you should be knowing one thing, so you have initialized with theta. Here you have initialized with theta and the theta the convergence. I already told you the previous step and the next step. There will be a difference of very if there is a very less difference, then you will stop it there itself. You start with the theta and get the lambda here. Correct. Okay, so here we initialize with theta, which means for if we select a uh, co different components for every component their probability and mean and sigma and then we go further ha huh. so yeah lambda. so theta means you are you are just giving uh, the num so you are giving the number of component and then for each of the component you are giving the mu and sigma correct for each of the 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 component each of the component yeah. means like each of the distribution that you are having how many distribution you are having or the component you are having you are starting with some theta value correct and then if you start with the theta value from the here you can see that if it starts with some some theta value okay you were having some curve you start with some theta value correct and then you will get the lambda correct you are starting with the theta you will get some lambda corresponding to that and again if you are getting the lambda you have to update the value of theta so in the clustering what was happening in the centroid problem you start with some centroid value Okay, all the data point was there. You started with some exactly. some two different centroid. Okay, and on the basis of something. So let's for example, you calculating the distance. After calculating the distance, whichever so whatever the point was uh, uh, like nearer to the first centroid, it it will come closer to this, right? It will included in this one, the first centroid one, right? And the the then the centroid will get updated. This is what happening earlier. Correct? Yes. Yes. You start with some centroid random. centroid and then you start calculating the distance from each of the point and whichever like for example if the x ith point is closer to the first centroid you will consider that point in, uh, in the first centroid correct and similarly for so earlier maybe that point will be in the different space like different uh, altogether but when you have calculated the distance it came closer to the first centroid and then after that you have started considering that this point is from the first centroid correct Yeah. Similarly, for any other x i plus one data point, you have calculated the same thing and then updated. You now this point is came in this cluster and then you have updated the value. Value. You start and then you you are doing for the i th iteration and after that i th iteration will come up with some conclusion. So this is what happening here also. <coughs> okay. Sir, I have a doubt in the lecture. Last EM lecture. At ten minutes here, yeah. you know this slide, yes. Yeah. Same. So uh, this, if we use the EM algorithm, algorithm to make a cluster, then will it be this oval shape? Or... Okay, this oval. Okay, so we are just discussing about the EM algorithm is taking care of the variance also, right? This is what you are asking, or what? Yes, sir. How is it able to make form shapes like that? Cluster shape. Cluster shape. Okay, this I need to check it. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll have to check this. What has been told here? i've seen the lecture but uh, i've seen it lo long back so i need to check it okay and then i'll maybe i'll post it on the discourse about this after this session sir could you repeat the question please sorry i missed uh, he was asking so what did you ask you were asking something right uh, yes sir so how does this the light yeah. algorithm makes cluster using that voronoi regions but it this em algorithm does not have voronoi regions it can take yes, the, re the reason is if you look at the left hand side what sir has drawn in terms of the contours it shows that um, uh, the lloyd's algorithm 
divides the points in hard clustering saying that you are in this cluster and you are in that cluster but here if you look at the left hand side in the contour and the red portion that has been circled in the lower left hand side uh, what uh, what this algorithm will do is it will give you the probability instead of Warnoi region it will say that okay there's a chance that this point can lie on the left cluster there's a chance that this point can lie on the right cluster and you can choose where to put it in a soft clustering approach so that's a major so because it gives you a probability not an actual cluster you can't have a Warnoi region because the Warnoi region requires you to uh, to give a point to a specific cluster without any ambiguity so here the probability introduces ambiguity and that ambiguity will stop you from creating a Warnoi region okay so we are saying so that you, it can be in either of the oval yes it can be in either and a probability is given since the probability is given you can't have a Warnoi region you have to choose the cluster to create a Warnoi region. So you can see the overlap, right? On the left mm -hmm. side, you can see the overlap between the two clusters, sir, on the left side, left side. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Yeah. So since there's an overlap, now how will you decide which point belongs to which cluster? So in the Lloyd's algorithm, uh, the Lloyd's algorithm goes ahead and uh, does that for you by saying that it, this is here and this is there even though it is a mix hodgepodge and mixture it goes ahead and does that even though the variance etc may be a bit different but uh, the em algorithm will not do that unless you specifically force it to it will give you a probability this is a 0.4 probability that will rise in the right cluster 0.6 in the left cluster now depending on uh, further parameters you can decide where to put it so that's a soft clustering approach because it gives you probability, you can't have a Warnoi region. You have to choose first which probability to take. And once you choose that, it's as good as the Lloyd's algorithm only. And then you will have Warnoi. Still as a higher variance, it will be having a higher probability. Also. See, yeah, because it really depends on how you understand the data and then basis that you decide which one it will fall in. So the EM algorithm will only give you the probability, but you should have some information beyond that to decide. Uh, where it will fall. So EM algorithm gives you a direction and gives you the probability. You can even ask the EM algorithm to choose for you, in which case it will go with the highest probability. So if you say choose for me, it will hard cluster based on the highest probability. It will take 0.6 as the highest and assign it to the cluster which has 0.6. And that will be similar to Warnoi region, right? Yes, that will be uh, Warnoi region in the sense that in Warnoi region, you, are, you don't have any overlap. So uh, the clusters are always centered around the mean so here it's possible that uh, you can have a point that is closer to the mean of the second cluster but belongs to the first cluster so there will be overlap because there will be overlap you can't really have a Warnoi region so here for example if uh, sir if you can draw any two distinct points in in the in the red area any two distinct points just take any two distinct See, what points happens, the yeah. Warnoi region generally divided everything right there it can't happen right in em algorithm see if you have a this is what you're saying right so for any data points that no, sir, what i'm that, saying is that the warnoi region in the warnoi region the assumption is that the point closest to the cluster is assigned correct. to the cluster regardless of the variance correct correct yeah so basically the eml like the warnoi region if you are using some some model where you are taking consideration of or uh uh, th this uh, Warnoi reason is what happens is it will just divide it like let's for example these are all the data point that belongs to this a cluster and this is all so that can't happen in, in em algorithm because it takes into concept because you you are for any data point even though the data point is here you can't directly say that belongs to a so this is a probability of one because there will be some probability that it belongs to b also right for the soft cl clustering this is what happens and we have discussed correct so even though the point which is very close to A, there is no, like the probability of this point going to B will be some, maybe it will be very less than 0 0.05, but there will be some probability, right? So that's why you can't draw this reason, correct? This is what you are yeah, saying. Basically, Warnoi region does not um, uh, consider an overlap between uh, clusters. Correct, correct. But uh, uh, EM does, because EM does consider an overlap between clusters, chances are it may assign a uh, point to cluster a even though it is closer to cluster b because it says based on the variance of cluster a and the probability of cluster a it is 
chances that they are in uh, uh, cluster B is much higher, even though it is closer to cluster A. So yeah. in that case, you will find that there is an overlap, as in the Warnoi regions are not distinct anymore. So the concept of Warnoi regions in EM does not exist. And if the cluster B has higher variance, then more points yeah. to B. Yeah, exactly. So probability will be more, it will go to cluster B. So you may have a point right next to uh, the center of cluster A, but it belongs to cluster B. Because so then how can you have a yeah because of the variance and the probability so then how can you have a Warnai region Warnai region have to be distinct so all the points will be mixed up you can't have a Warnai region there i mean this is my understanding here uh, and yeah, I'm not I guess this is correct yeah this is correct so i think the Warnai region is it's like generally applied for those cases only Karen. and we are you you are based on some decision or like not decision distance you are creating a reason right so this this are the point that will belong to some cluster a and b but here you can't do that because for every data point you have some probability that will belongs to this a or b right? even though it's closer to a there is a chance that it can come from the b also maybe the probability is very less but there is a very chance but even though if you are increasing uh, the increasing the variance, whatever you have said for the B, and then you are increasing the number of data points also. The data point, even though it's closer to A, can go like maybe the probability would be higher that will come from B also. If you are increasing the value of uh, the, the weightage of B and then the, the variance of B. So there you can't create this reason because the data you can separate, you can't separate. There can be uh, still uh, like a, a region where it is not a straight line. It can be some kind of a curve. Yeah, it can be some type of a curve also. So this can be some. Like, it can be like the one Professor drew. Like in the it can be something like this also. So all the data points here for not for this case like not EM, but wherever you are getting like for the decision tree or any like the KNN. So all these data, let's for example, all those data points lying in this area, it belongs to A and this reason belongs to it. So this can be one for no reason, but this doesn't exist for the EM algorithm. It's clear. Yeah. It's clear. So I guess, so so you can go through the slide again. So we were, so since for lambda for each of the data points, we'll be having so and this, this year already made for the, all the lambda for each of the ith data points, there will be some probability. And then the summation of that probability will always be equals to one. And then the EM algorithm is there. You have started with some theta and then uh, this is what you're doing in the EM algorithm. Like we have already discussed all those stuffs. So the, if you are able to aware, like know about the, from the figure itself, I guess this is more than sufficient to know. So um, only the, the questions, if you are getting calculation based questions will be there, not theoretical from the EM algorithm and the calculation based questions mostly will be on the basis of like two, three formula that we have discussed. Like after fixing the value of Lambda, you're getting some theta, the estimated value of theta maximum this that 10 years and those five, six questions that is there. Those are, I guess, more than sufficient to solve that. Is this clear? Uh, sure, yeah, this, this part is like a difficult one that I can accept. Like, but yeah, this is how it is. Yeah, yeah. You were asking something, sir. The original log likelihood function also we could have maximized, right? But it's a bit yeah, tricky. one more thing is like for the original law. Huh? So there was one concept was if, if you have a, so you can't reach the, uh, the global maxima. This is what has been given, right? So even though for this function itself, if let's, for example, this function was something like this and it has came some went like this and then went like this. So for this, for EM algorithm also, you are reaching to the local maximum only, not the global maximum. This is what you are asking or something else. Okay, so so even if we maximize the original log likelihood function, we may not get go to the original. Though we are not doing itself, we are just doing for the maximum. yeah modified version and then reaching to the max like the the local maxima of the original true likelihood function. But original also we could have maximized, but it would it would have been tricky. Uh, so we were not able to. That's why we have started using Jensen's, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah.
So this is clear, right? The the, the figure is clear left to everyone. And the problem we can solve it. Some problem maybe. Uh, so in the the revision session, I guess Wednesday we'll just solve the problem only from the week four. We'll not be discussing any concepts there. Right. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, so I think yeah, the focus if it can be on the problems that will be great. Yeah. So fourth week we'll just discuss the, the the this we'll solve this five problems itself. Okay, from the fifth week and wherever I I think so I'll just, just come up with some more problem after seeing the 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 pre like the paper itself. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Sir, the original log likelihood function maximization is not possible or it is difficult? It was difficult. Like it will be possible. There will be possible in the future. Maybe there will be coming up with some algorithm or something. There might be like doable now also, but we we were not able to do that. So that we use the concept of Jensen. But even if we do that, we'll reach only a local maximum. Yeah, we are reaching to the no local maximum. No, in the original one, you can reach a global, but the computation is prohibitively yeah. expensive. Like prohibitively in the sense it is practically useless to do that. But you can you can reach a global maximum there. If we are going to the modified version, then we will only reach the global maximum, uh, like the global bound, lower bound of the global maximum. Oh, no, no. You uh, so what will happen is that in the modified one, you will only reach the local maximum. You'll never, you will not necessarily reach the global maximum. So what you then do is, you run the same algorithm in iteration with different points in the hope that one of those points will allow you to reach the global maximum. And so you run this iteration. Yeah, Say that again. At that point where uh, after multiple iterations, we are reaching a point where. We are hoping that we are getting. Yeah, uh, we are hoping. It is never sure. Outcome. Yeah, you but, can only hope. But at yeah. this point, we might get convergence. Yeah, but this also is a local, right? Okay, local convergence. Yeah, yeah. So this, so see, this is what he said for the multiple. So what you can do is, so the first step you got some local. You can do it for the random value, like you are fixing up, taking some different theta value, and then getting getting up some some. So that's a. You're initializing with some different different value in, in the hope that you'll be reaching up with two, three global and uh, not two global, like two, three local maximum, and then compare it to get the global one. This is what you can do. So the same step you can iterate it more number of times. Like see, you have started with some initialization, okay, and you have reached with the first local maxima. Similarly, you can do it for two, three times more, okay, just in the hope that you can reach up to the global maxima. Okay. okay sir. But there is no po possibility regarding that. So okay. each step uh, will sir, be reaching for the local, the local maximum. Yeah. Sir, combining with the elbow method, so we can't still reach the global, uh, find the global. No, elbow method. How is going to help here? Because I can because the, the yeah you can what you can do is for the two three yeah you for the two you started with like you, you will you will be having different uh, number of times you are doing right with the initialization for each of the step you are yes. calculating mm -hmm. some theta and then plotting it. See, so this is the same randomness, right? The, the hit and trial only. You're just hoping that you just started trying for the set 10 steps, 10 initialization term, and then hoping that you will be reaching that. But there's no guarantee in that, correct? Uh, no, the, the, no. So, so the num number of clusters is a, uh, like a, uh, 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 it's a number, right? It's a, uh, we, we will not get a fractional number, right? So then the, Elbow method should be able to pick up this, right? I don't think so, but if, if somebody, uh, I, I am not yeah, sure. The algorithm that is given is for the modified log likelihood, okay? The algorithm is not available for the normal log likelihood. The normal like log likelihood can give you maxima. Sir, can you draw a gra uh, uh, something here with like two, three peaks at different levels on the right hand side? See, you can have a plot something like this. And two, three peaks. Yeah. Yeah. So now here, if you look at the peak one and you reach a maximum of peak one, the algorithm will stop right there because yeah. it can only see maxima here. So then is this the maximum? This is the local maximum. It's not the global maximum. So depending on the point at which you start, you will reach the maximum, which is nearest to that point, not beyond that. So what you then do is you start looking at different points to see if one of them will give you a higher value than the earlier maximum. 
which means you can never be sure if you're hitting a global maximum. So this you is just like initialization. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is just like gradient descent. Gradient descent will always give you a local maxima only. It will never give you a global maxima. Yeah, correct. See, you can start with some initialization such that you just reach with L1, L2, this L3 and L4. You haven't reached L4. There is a L2, right? There is a possibility. No. You've started with different yeah. initialization, but you didn't reach L2 itself. So out of these three, you will compare and you will come up with like L3 is a global maxima, but it is not, correct? No, no one, yeah, I understood this concept. Uh, but the thing is that here, uh, whatever a peak we are getting is the uh, number of case, right? Number of clusters, basically. So number of clusters is not a real number. So it is it is a like a, 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 a what do you call it? natural number. Uh, then uh, we can with the elbow method we we can find it right. How many actually the data? How many clusters actually it, it can be separated into? I'm, I'm not. Okay. So for that. each cluster, you have to use different initialization like that. For each. No, I think the question is how many clusters are there based on the curve? Can you find that out? That is the first question. Once you have found the number of clusters, what is the maximum for each cluster is the second question. So I, I, I don't think that is covered anywhere. At least I don't know. But if if Vishal knows, maybe he can answer. See, here, no. what we are... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so one more thing. Yeah, okay. Here, we are getting multiple Gaussians. That means we are getting multiple key, uh, peaks just because we have uh, that many number of clusters, right? No, no. So here you're getting peak and so you- Every, you okay, every peak, so every peak yeah. we can assume that is contributed by a cluster. Yeah, right? So for any peak now, you'll be able to calculate all the other stuff, all the parameters. It's not telling you- His, his question sir is that does a peak like L2, does that mean it is one cluster or is it a combination of more than one cluster? It's a combination a of cluster, right? Theta is what here? Theta tells you about what? Theta will give you so many things, right? Theta will give you the number of clusters also. No, not number of clusters, like all the pi to two pi k value. It will be giving you all the other parameters. So what were the parameters? So we're having the sigma, nu, and everything will be given from this theta itself. Theta itself is a parameter of this 3k minus one parameter. Correct. Uh, yeah, but okay. Now, any for example, if the uh, first uh, parameter See. pi, pi pi does not produce a, a Gaussian uh, by itself, right? Because it, it's uh, like a, now when we have a mean and a variance, okay, that associated with a single Gaussian, right? Every mean and so uh, whatever value we change, it is not going to create a new curve. Whatever value C okay, for the mu the, for the mu mu and variance. Okay, huh. so we have there's a possibility of any any value, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Whatever the value we get for any mu or any variance, it is not going to create a new curve, new peak. It it, it, it is just it, it it the number of uh, the what do you call it, the uh, convex and convex curves okay. will be defined by the this example. By, See, you were having some simple Bernoulli distribution. Okay, so for the Bernoulli, if we were having some likelihood function, some p square into one minus p, you are getting some curve, something like that. So here, what does that p denotes? So, sorry, p. The peak denotes at some p star. This function was getting the, the maximum. You are maximizing the likelihood function such that to get the p star, that is the estimated value of p. So here we have what? Here we have theta and that theta itself is a combination of 3k minus one parameter. Is this what you were asking or something? Yeah, yeah, that is understood, so, sir. See, but theta here... t itself means you are estimating this many terms. Yeah, yeah, that is clear, sir. My, my question is that, okay, uh, whether theta uh, or uh, like sorry mu or sigma uh, the theta actually defines the how many number of uh, concave and con uh, convex curve we have right so theta we have not. already those things we are just estimating those values what would be the estimated value of those things so k everything has been sorted out the number of k we have started in the starting itself we have sorted out the okay the k there are five components 
so all those five permit we are estimating those value we are not updating anything we are just estimating those values estimating so let's for example if we are having five boxes in the starting we assume that it was five boxes for each of the boxes we will just estimate the value of lambda and then we will estimate the value of this mu and sigma so after that so the peak is not going to define how many number of this this has already been defined we are just estimating those values all those values we are estimating and this is what we are discussing right so e step you have fixed the value of lambda i and then you are updating those so mu sigma k and lambda k. so peak even though the changed peak will change the value of lambda sigma all those things but it will not be changing you the number of components and the cluster numbers and all all those things will not be changed with the num the, the change in the peak and all okay yeah something maybe uh, still uh, not very clear for me like uh, uh, what i understood is that okay the moment we uh, decide the k number of k so we decided the num number of uh, maximum. The, key, the component has already been decided. Yeah, so yeah. The, if the, the, the number of cluster is not going to change it as the peak changes. Is, uh, sir, no, are you saying no, that no, we can compare no. theta for different peaks and then whichever as the highest we can? No, so, so, so maybe I'll, I'll try to explain once again, sir. The, okay, theta, the number of clusters, the moment we decide number of clusters, we already know how many uh, Gaussians we are going to have, right? In this, how many curvature we are going to get. We don't know the shape, we don't know the peak, but we are one thing we are sure that there can be maximum uh, k number of peaks, right? It cannot be uh, in anything more than k. K Is number of peaks for the original plot. Yeah, the no. final plot. So that so we don't we, know, no? No, okay, once we have, if we have five, five clusters, Okay. Can I just, doesn't mean that five peaks are there. No, can no. I can I just can I just maybe yeah. I can help. Yeah. So see, uh, just try to think of this uh, in one of the earlier slides. So you don't have to go there. I'm just explaining it here. See what happens is that you are given clusters. You are given the peaks. Whether you consider peaks as clusters is a point that you can keep to the side for now. Now in those, the thing that you're trying to understand is does a point belong to cluster one or does it belong to cluster two what you're trying to do is maximize the chances that each of the points is being assigned to the correct cluster okay so maximization is of the probability that each point is assigned to the correct cluster that's what the algorithm has to do the point the algorithm runs to make sure that each point is assigned to the correct cluster that is a maximization uh, goal so now what happens is that in the EM algorithm now encounters a situation where the, the curve or the overall curve which is which we can observe is such that we are unable to figure out where each point is going to land up. So we are unable to maximize because we don't have a way to do that. Okay. Uh, based on the log like likelihood uh, function. So what we do is we take a modified likelihood function that creates probability curves or probability density curves that allows us to figure out with a lower bound that at least this much is right, if not more, then at least this chance is correct. So it will give you probability density curve saying that this is the probability given this as a starting point of a particular lambda that uh, the chances of the probability here, I can maximize the chances that the point lies in this probability curve. That's what it says. So you are thinking in terms of points, you have to think in terms of probability densities. So the EM basically gives you the maximal probability density curves given the starting points that you provided. So think of it like that and then you'll be able to visualize this better. That even if there are multiple peaks, you don't know uh, which point will fall in which of the peaks. So for that, you have a mac, uh, the modified log likelihood function, which will tell you that with a lower bound of um, uh, probability that, okay, chances are that at least these many things are correct. And with that, you can maximize the chance that this point falls under this curve. That's what the modified uh, log likelihood function does. So we don't know when we initialize. We don't know after we maximize. It will be in which 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 of the cluster. It will be based on the initialization you give. So you have to initially tell the algorithm that this is what I think 
the curves, uh, the probability density curves look like and the overlaps look like this. That's what the initialization does. And it will say, OK, let me start with this and check how to maximize based on the information that you are giving me. And it does that uh, EM step, uh, estimation, maximization, estimation, maximization, estimation, maximization. And then it says, OK, based on the inputs are the, and the initial inputs you gave me, this is what we do. So that's why the professor was saying that uh, to get the best, best output from the EM algorithm, you start with the k-means clusters to give the means, the initial mu's and the variances, the means and the variances as input to the EM algorithm, it will take that and then it will build a much better model on top of it. So the initialization is an issue and uh, you have to think of these as the probability maximization. It's a probability maximization function where what is the probability that a point belongs to cluster one and not cluster two, even though both the clusters are nearly overlapping. So if we use Lloyd's algorithm and find the best initialization and we ma when we maximize yeah, we that, hope that it will be under the. No, no. Yeah, this, uh, yeah. According to the professor, this is one of the most accurate approaches. If you initialize the EM algorithm with Lloyd's and then run EM, it is one of the most accurate ways of coming to a very good output. And very fast. He didn't explain uh, more than that, but he he gave the intuition that uh, if you choose the correct initialization, you will get the best maximization. And the way to choose the correct initialization is to run Lloyd's before EM. You can look at the lecture; it will explain this a bit more. But think of it as probability density choices. Yeah. <laughs> like, can I uh, use a GMM uh, to process sequentially? Uh, for mm -hmm. example, yeah, now I we have. I can't hear you. Uh, sorry, sir. Can I use a GMM uh, sequentially? Uh, like, uh, I have uh, some amount of data now, maybe 1 million data. So, uh, it's a time series data. So, I'm getting another uh, 10,000 data tomorrow. So, I can uh, find all the parameters with the existing data. And tomorrow, when I get another 10,000 data, uh, I'm not going to compute all these million uh, points again. I just keep that uh, the data by uh, the parameters what I have as a prior and only process these 1,000 data. Is there any difference okay. if I do that one or if I do... Can you repeat that from the starting? Can you repeat that from the starting? I just missed out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to think uh, to execute this sequentially, okay, because I had some situations earlier where I have uh, uh, not all the data available at that one point of time, okay, that it's a time series data, I'm getting, I'm expecting more data in future. So, with the current available data, maybe one, assume 1 million data, I okay. process then uh, found the uh, best uh, number of case and best parameters for all these clusters. So okay. Tomorrow, just, okay. For whatever the information you have, the data set you trace back and get to know about the distribution. Yes. And tomorrow okay. I'm getting another ten thousand data. So this ten thousand data I'm processing separately, but by utilizing the uh, prior as what I got previously. Okay. okay. So see, I hope so. This will work there because the data set whatever you are getting from the similar pattern of data set you are getting right. Yes, daily, yes, yes. Daily yes, yes, yes. So I hope so it will work, but in the other cases, I don't think so it will be working. Because whenever you are adding or some, maybe that data set itself is altogether different and then you have to trace back, uh, maybe that the tracing back will give you a different sort of a distribution itself. But whatever, if you are doing, so you're working in like, let's for example, you're getting some sort of information from some fixed domain. And if you are getting from some fixed domain, that will work it there from my perspective. I hope so. Okay. Yeah, basically, you're training and fitting the data. So training is the initial 10,000 that you use to figure out a model. And the fitting is where you're using a new set of 10,000 to fit into the trained model. 
right? But then the assumption here is that your training data and your fitting data, they are coming from the same kind of background and distribution. So for that, what you can do is you can train, test, and then fit. So first you train the data in the first 10,000. Let's say you test it in the next 10,000 where you already know what your output you're expecting. And then you see if the output matches the model that you have created. If it matches, then you can continue doing that in the future. Otherwise, ideally, you should be keep, you should keep on retraining your data 